So I talk about partners all the time. I didn't solve her problem with the underground uh, pressure tank. I called Mark Layton, and uh, he's, he's seen it before, and uh, he got back to Cindy and helped her solve that. So it's all who you know, right? Okay, our next speaker is Tom Christofferson. Um, uh, yeah, talking about proper well maintenance. It's all yours. You know that guy he talked about that didn't prepare? <laughs> Hang on, we're going for a ride. I want to talk to you about why maintenance is important. Maintenance has a couple different faces. You know, we all think about repairing the pump and repairing the well. But let's talk about maintenance in the whole water system or maybe maintaining the groundwater itself. Total coliforms are a problem. They're not necessarily harmful, but we use them as a good indicator. They tell us if the system has been open or not, and if we have system integrity. <clears throat> in our state, we had four distinct purposes of our act, and you can see them there. There, they're to protect, 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 and provide. Um, our drillers are required to submit well logs to the owner and to the state, so we have that authority. These are our chapters of our regulations that um, require those drillers to maintain logs, to maintain that relationship. Uh, we have uh, four chapters. One of them is our nuts and bolts of our uh, constructions. But our biggest struggle is illegal water wells. Um, as you most can tell, out of sight, out of mind. People get a well drilled and they just walk away from the old one. Maybe they say they want to use it later maybe they want to keep it or they don't get any water and we see open boreholes anywhere from four inches to the one on the right it's a 36 inch borehole that was over 360 foot deep my inspector stepped on the board and the board went down the hole or we see um, environmental wells uh, people think because it's in a surface contamination or it's a place where they're cleaning it up they don't have to really maintain it put the proper stick-ups in there. Or you don't have to grout them properly. You can drill them right through the cement and leave your well there, put a cover over it, but what you're really doing is recycling. You know, you're pulling the contaminant out, rain comes, washes it right back in. Um, location's a key portion of our, um, our regulations. You don't want to be on at least 100 feet from any contaminant. That big poop pile there next to the irrigation well is not a good idea. And normally what happens is we drill a well and then they expand the feedlot that comes closer to the well. Oh, here's some of those interactive videos. Look at this. This is great, neat cement. This is what I was talking about yesterday. And this is a microannulus. Um, oh, poop. <laughs> it cut it off. What you were seeing was water passing between the casing and the well. Now here we're seeing a grout failure. This is where cement has blown right through a chip seal grout, has gone into an aquifer and cracked. So maintenance um, is, a, is a, you know, a subjective word. This is a little bit of what I talked about yesterday on the, on the videos. You can see where the contaminant goes right around the protective covers, right around the grout, goes past the um, confining layers and contaminates your aquifer. The best maintenance here is to perforate those old wells and try to reestablish that clay layer. When we do that, then we separate those aquifers again and we've maintained that integrity of the groundwater. Or you can bore along the side of it and try to inject grout into that borehole to separate those things. Um, we've discovered in our studies that we can't seal a well because the surface area is not sealable. If it was, we wouldn't have groundwater. We have to work with the, the mother nature aspect of it and use that filtration system and uh, reestablish that. So here's things that every well owner should have. You should know the legal location of your well, what it's made in, the depth and diameter of the hole, total depth of the casing, uh, static water level, pumping water level, who drilled it, his license number, the date it began, intended use of the well, and the well owner's name and address. And if you do have water quality results, do a baseline. These are all things that are required in Nebraska because one year we're dealing with floods where we've had uh, water over the top of our wells in, in 2011. The next year we've had um, other challenges. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, yeah. <laughs> next year it's range fires. 
you know, with all those floods and all that water, we got a lot of good uh, subgrowth, and then we get a drought and we get range fires. Now you can see on the left, well, we like to have steel through the frost zone. Um, plastic just does not hold up. 